rabbit, 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 they were off doing other things, you know. This is actually Gene Chalice, who uh, I work with regularly on the show. And what happened in this particular case was, uh, I was uh, I was living down in Bournemouth in those days, and, and I was driving up, depending on the trains, which were always pretty awful on a Sunday, but I would train or, or driving up. And we had this, this particular year, we had an incredible downpour of snow. I mean, really heavy, heavy snow. And I remember getting up to early in the morning to, to get into my car to drive up to, to London. And I opened the door and the snow was about six foot high up against the door. I mean, it was that bad, so I waded through it and couldn't even see my car. It was just a little mound, a little white mound. So I went back in and I found my boss and I said, look, the situation is I, I can't even get out of the car park. And there's no point in attempting to, uh, to get to see if the trains are running because this is definitely the wrong kind of snow, you know. Uh, <laughs> so uh, he said, well, uh, leave it with me, Bill. I'll go on to Broadcasting now, see if there are producers and, and who've been working overnight uh, or anybody sort of local who can, who can come in at the last minute. And uh, the studio manager, that's the people who operate the, 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 the grounds and the tapes and all bits of people. So he found me back, he said, we've managed to find uh, everybody, really. We've managed to find all the technical staff, but we don't have a producer. He said, <laughs> so he said, uh, do you think you could produce it over the phone? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So that's why I give it a go. So he said, well, this is the, the, the number of the studio. So I found the studio, and the studio manager said, yeah, we can work that out there. I knew the studio manager, which was great. So he said, what I'll do, he said, I'll put the speaker in the producer's chair and he said when you speak on the phone it will come out of the speaker so you and you will get a feed of all the rehearsal and all the, the bits and pieces that you need to know down the phone and it all worked very well and we, did it we, we rehearsed the whole thing we did our links with i can't remember it was probably cyprus and gibraltar or somewhere and we were talking to, to uh, australia and we, we normally record pre-recorded australia because it was obviously mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know, it was the middle of their night if we would have actually done it live. So, so all those, it all worked and it absolutely worked perfectly. So we went on the air and uh, da -da -dee, da -da -da, the old familiar music and uh, I thought, now wait a minute, I've been talking down the line into the studio. Now, if the plug, if the plug has to be just in the wrong hole, I could actually come out on the air. So I thought, well, I'll just do a few tests. So I had the speaker there, the radio speaker, and as it was going, the la la dee da 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 making noises like that, just in tune with the music, just to see if I was hearing anything coming through on the speaker. All this sort of thing. So, uh, like I said, they faded down, G. Chavis came in, we introduced to where it was, so they go over to Cyprus, that you know, I got into the first record and the studio manager came on the line and he said, um, what are all those noises you were making <laughs> <laughs> when the signature tube was playing? So I said, well, I explained why. I said, well, you know, because I'm just a bit worried, you know, that the buggery might, might mean that I was being heard on the air. So he said, well, he said, it's, it's funny, really, that you should, uh, you should make those kind of I said, why is that? He said, well, the girl who's looking after the tape says you recognize the heavy breathing. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was that the reason for this picture was that uh, at the end of it all, um, the BBC magazine needed to say got hold of it, and they said uh, the headline was BBC realizes the ambition of a lifetime. <laughs> he produced his program from home. <laughs> <laughs> but they explained the whole thing about the snow, and of course they had all these crazy photographs we had to get taken on the roof of the broadcasting house in, in the snow. So that was that. Was, that, was that. But um, <clears throat> the other thing about... Um, excuse me. Right. The other thing about uh, family favourites in those days was that um, 
we used to, whoever was producing it, was asked a week before Christmas to go off to crazy places where uh, the British forces were based all over the world, or places that you couldn't even hear about most of the time, and, uh, and record uh, specials for horses, Christmas Day specials, you know, and they say, oh, I'm coming down and all I'm coming three, and especially he's got the dog and all that stuff. You know, so we, we're on the beach, it's 100 degrees, and we're having, you know, so it was my job this particular year to go off to, to one of these places, so they, uh, I, I, they, I said, well, what do you do? And they said, well, first of all, you've got to go and see the BBC doctor, because I, I, I was going to believe Diego Garcia, uh, Deci Mamano, anybody heard of Deci Mamano? It's a name to the face, I don't know. And all these crazy things. So he said, go to the BBC doctor and tell him where you're going. And he'll tell you what injections and inoculations. So I went to see the BBC doctor, and you can't believe this. The BBC doctor's name is Dr. Blackadder. <laughs> That's a great start, and it's true. It's Dr. Blackadder. So I went to see Dr. Blackadder. It's <laughs> not a good, very good start. So uh, he said, uh, where are you? You know, he had a big map of the world, you know, all color coded. And he said, well, where are you going? So I said, Diego Garcia. Oh, yes, well. He said, you know, it starts with white, which is nothing, and then goes through all the various colors to black, which is everything. So I said, no, no, so he's going through the end and say, oh, that's, that's okay, it's not too bad, we give you a couple for that, and we go, oh, well, no, that's good. And where's the other one? I said, Belize. And he said, ah, oh, that black one up there. I said, what does that mean? He said, seven different inoculations and injections. Now this is a week, I mean, I'm, I'm due to go, like, a few days, because it's like a week before Christmas. There's no time to sort of say, well, I'll give you one now, and then come back in a, you know, a few weeks' time. So he pumped me before this. I mean, I was a dangerous man in London. I had very dairy, and God knows what. He was scraping bits on there. And, and after he put all these things in, I suddenly, I was gone. And I, you know, I just had a blackout. And I, I sort of woke up with my, my you know, pink on bits. You know. I said, oh. I said, what was that? Was that a reaction to uh, all the injections? He said, no, it's called fainting. 